Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotic Network, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 26,000 Theseus from Australia. And I'm back with a full rebuild of the robot for the Houston World Championship. It's absolutely insane with the mechanical complexity. I can't wait to jump into it on Behind the Bot. Yeah, so one of our season goals is to really push um, the boundaries of FTC design. And we wouldn't be satisfied just to optimize the design that we've you know, already done. So we decided to just go through and remake every part just a little bit better. Um, and that was the main thing, um, lighter rover, faster rover, and more rigid overall. Yeah, so the intake is very, very interesting. We made it thinner since Nationals, um, which helps us get the samples into the... Uh, do you know how to that? It helps us get the samples into the transfer position a lot easier. So, surgical tubing spins the same way the Nationals intake does, and it comes back up here and it just helps it down straight. We've had a few fatigue issues with it. We couldn't find an O-ring quite the right size. So rubber band, it works fine. Uh, we've had to replace it once over the competition. So a little bit of fatigue, but overall it's been pretty solid. It grips nicely because it's rubber. Yeah, so we, for that transfer, our claw will come down and it normally picks up. And that's why we need these doors. Pulls out the top like that. Um, we've used a few different types of springs here. Um, these small springs, um, which, you know, they add a little bit of force and then we had to add some larger springs to give it a tiny bit of extra. And we can adjust these a little bit. Okay. So they help us um, adjust it for the transfer depending on how quickly. Yeah, we've opted for um, bare motors on every, uh, every transmission and mostly gear downs, like secondary reductions. In the case of the intake, we're running a GT2 belt off a 14 tooth pinion there to a larger one here, and I think the output RPM is about 1.5 thousand off, uh, yep. off by memory. Okay. Um, yep. We went with the cam because sometimes when samples get lodged underneath, um, it can actually break the servo, which is connecting to the linkage, um, and the cam completely prevents that. We haven't faced issues with that, but it helps us pick up samples from behind. Sometimes they can slide underneath and into the front of the intake and it works super cool, super compliant. Yeah, so for those of you who have followed you know, PowerPlay, you'll notice this design looks a bit familiar. Um, this is similar to a few of the turrets we saw during the PowerPlay season, specifically this was Wolfpack Mackinac. Yeah. Um, and it's got, oh, I can't count the doffs. Um, so we've got a, a turret doff, which we use in our specimen auto for keeping a straight pathing, which is a little bit more efficient. We've got the arm doff, which is for, for everything for transfer. Um, claw at the top, wrist doff. Our claw is very unique because we've gone with this um, this kind of combination of uh, passive and active. So similar to the intake, it's back drivable. So it will come out if we do a specimen clip and it's also useful in the intake so we can slam down um, and it will open. But then we have this release for our samples in the bucket. Um, and that's a really nice system. It also prevents um, wear on the servo because you're basically putting, you've got a lot of force on the sample so it doesn't come out, but there's no additional load on the servo. It tends to be a lot of trial and error. So as the um, cam opens, I'll drop that out. As the cam opens, the little bits on the back of the claws which push it uh, end up on an angle and the contour of the print actually follows that. So it goes from straight to angled inside the cam as it turns. And that just means there's full contact on the cam and there's not as much play. Um, but overall, yeah, trial and error to figure out how much opens and um, yeah, make sure the whole system runs smoothly. Yeah, so we actually originally um, were thinking of doing full inverse kinematics for the turret. Um, because uh, one of the main design principles that Josh had when designing this was that we wanted to score uh, with the turret and intake simultaneously within the sub. Um, however, due to some time constraints, we opted with going just with um, tuning the individual positions. Um, we have a con uh, control on our second controller um, that allows for the second driver to automatically adjust the heading of the turret to match with the heading of the drivetrain, depending on what the first driver is doing. And we found that this is actually very helpful, especially when the specimen bar is quite full, um, because actually um, Declan over there can just wiggle the turret around to fit uh, more specimens onto the bar when it's already full. Yeah. yeah, so we run two motors on this lift. It is continuously strung on this side and then cascade bungee counter sprung on the other side. We actually have a spool for a cascade return string for our level three hang, but that never, um, you know, we never ended up 
Yeah, we tried a lot of different methods going into this. We tried the RKA style counter springing, um, which is like a cascade with a lever. We've tried continuous bungee, but we found all of them had a lot of friction. So we opted for simply running a bungee cable through a V groove and then back down and zip tying it to the stage. This was so easy. You can basically set this up in, you know, an hour maybe. Um, and we found that it's, you can fine tune the tension of the bungees so that you get um, like a very good cascade kind of result. And it completely counteracts gravity, which is really great for such a heavy deposit. Yeah, so this clutch was originally intended for our level three, but um, for the sake of time, we just went for the level two. But it's very, very simple in principle. We have a servo which currently holds apart these two pulleys. And when it's released, they interlock, which connects the drivetrain power to the, like, the deposit spools. Um, if you have a close look, it's just belted transmissions there, two sets of belts. One which brings the drivetrain power up to the axle of the PTO and the other one which brings the power from the axle of the PTO to the deposit. Yeah, so um, doing, uh, so our climb is completely automated. Um, all our uh, second driver has to do is press one button and we can complete the entire climb sequence. And the, the way that we match the um, speeds between them is that we assign the lift motors, uh, which is the two motors down here, um, to one actuator group. Um, similar to how KookieBots did it. I uh, had a lot of inspiration from KookieBots. Um, and so our main vertical slide actuator is in one group and that is active for most of the uh, auto and tell your periods. Once hang starts, when the driver um, confirms that we want to hang, he presses a single button and that uh, those two slide motors are added to an, a separate group, which is the hang actuator group. And those uh, that group contains the back two uh, drivetrain motors that are uh, using um, like run to command, like PID loop. Um, they're set to a specific velocity that is the exact same as the gearing of the vertical slides. Yeah, it did require a little bit of tuning, but because of the way it was designed, it actually works really, really well with mm -hmm. the clutch. Yeah. Because they're, they're both um, mechanically linked. Yeah, we wanted to do something that no team had ever done before. And you hear the word modular thrown around a lot, but not quite to this, the extent of this robot. So this robot disassembles into five pieces, um, and it does it in about one minute, which means that Every part has to be interlocking with each other and then screws together with very minimal screws. If you look along the robot, you'll see that there are lines which separate the deposit module from the drivetrain. That is because the deposit can lift straight off. And same goes for the drivetrain. The drivetrain slides actually su slide out separately. And the original goal with this was we were actually planning on hop swapping a sample module to the deposit um, <laughs> because all of the geared, all of the transmissions are removable so they're gears, so they come out of contact and we actually can change the gear ratio based on the module. So you could have a sample module, which has a much faster lift and a lot less weight. Um, this has led to like a lot of design challenges with like rigidity, but overall, um, a lot of fun. And it led to the full bare motor drivetrain. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, PCs, thank you guys so much. You always build really mechanically complex robots that are implemented super, super well. So I'm really glad we can get this behind the bot. Reporting to Thunder Robotics Network, I'm Amhas, and this is Team 26000, PCs.